Well, good morning here, Friday, uh, the 10th of February. Time's about 6 a.m., just after. Um, now, there's a purpose for this video. Yesterday, as you probably know, on Thursday evening, we meet here in Gateway uh, Room, and uh, we had a, a meeting, a, a good meeting. It was a great meeting. And, and I was speaking on wrestling. Not necessarily just wrestling with God, but wrestling. Wrestling in prayer, wrestling in our lives, and, and when we're wrestling through difficult situations, how do we overcome those situations? Where can we get from help from? I'm reminded of the scripture, uh, I lift my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And so uh, the, the reason why I'm doing this video this morning is for some reason. Uh, it just disappeared off my uh, iPad. Uh, it recorded, but when I came to download it or upload it, uh, it had gone. So I was thinking about this, thinking about this wrestling. And I'll be honest with you, I seem to be wrestling all night through the service of how to, how to uh, um, speak, what word to say. And it was all about wrestling and everything that happened in the service seemed to be linked to this wrestling. It was all a little bit hard work. Uh, you know, we asked somebody to pray that came in the evening. Would you pray for us? Not, and and um, he said, well, no, no, I, I don't feel like praying. I said, come on, he's a great prayer. Great man of God. Um, and uh, no, no, I don't really feel like, I, I'm feeling weak. And I said to him, best, best time to pray. And we persuaded him, we cheered him on, and we got up and he prayed, and what a fabulous prayer. But he had to wrestle to do it. And sometimes in our lives, we have to wrestle in order to uh, fulfill what we wish to achieve, you know? So, I went to Genesis 28, and I told the story of Jacob. Now, just a little bit of Jacob's background. Jacob was a twin brother of Esau. Uh, his parents was Isaac and Rebekah, and um, they were born, but there was a prophecy over uh, these twins Whilst, uh, they were, whilst they were in the womb. And, and the prophecy was that uh, the lesser would become the greater. That was the prophecy. So anyway, uh, the twins were born. Esau came out first, but Jacob came out holding onto his heel, onto the heel of Esau. So as they grew up, uh, as with tradition and normal ways in the Jewish life, the firstborn received the blessing of the father. Now, Isaac's father was Abraham, and Abraham had, had uh, if you remember Abraham and Sarah, they, um, they were Isaac's uh, uh, mum and dad, but they were late in the years, like almost 100 years old before they had the baby, which was against, which is an impossibility. But I want you to know that there's nothing impossible with God. With God, all things are possible, but sometimes we need to wrestle. God doesn't just give us all on a plate. He don't just hand everything over to us on a plate. He says, yeah, the blessing's there, but you're going to have to fight for it. <laughs> you're going to have to fight. There's just, a phrase keeps coming up. You've got to fight for your right to party. I mean, it's a song, I know. But you've got to fight for your right to party in heaven. We've got to fight for our rights. So, so, the promise was spoken over Abraham. You'll be the father of many nations. Isaac now is Abraham's... Uh, True boy and son, the son of the promise. He had all the sons, he had Ishmael, but we're thinking of Isaac now. The, the son of the promise. And Isaac, of course, with Rebecca, they give birth to these twins. So, as, uh, as, it, comes to the, as it comes to receiving the, um, the blessing, there's, uh, there's some, um, what would you say, some, some conniving going on. I'm looking for the word, some deception, that's the word. Some deception, there's a deceitfulness about it all. And uh, Jacob pretended to be Esau. And he went into his father who was on his, kind of like on his final days. Uh, his eyesight wasn't right. And uh, he was like, you know, like our bodies when we get old. We've got to remember when we get old, our eyesight goes, our bodies fail. It isn't that God's given up on us. It's just that the bodies are given up on us. The, the Lord only lasts so long. But if we know God through Jesus Christ, Hey, it doesn't matter anyway because we know where we're going. And so Isaac's on his deathbed and he gives Jacob the promise. Uh, Esau comes in to receive his promise, realises that his brother's stolen his promise. 
and he's and he's and he set to kill him. He's going to kill him. So Rebecca, the mom, they get Jacob, you need to go. And off they go. They leave the place. They run away. Uh, Esau is so upset. He actually uh, is so upset with his dad. He's so upset with the situation that, that he, he decides to take it out on his, his dad and his, and his mom because his father says, says to, um, his father says to Jacob, Do, uh, don't take a wife from the Ishmaelites. Don't take a wife from a foreign people. Take a wife from our people. Go to your uncle and uh, take a wife from within the family. That's what they would do. But Esau thought, yeah, I'm not doing that. I'll show you. And he storm, storms out and he goes and marries uh, a woman from another nation, from another tribe. There's nothing to do with the Jewish. So in other words, there's like this interbred thing through Ishmael. Anyway, that's another story. So we're following the story of Jacob. So Jacob's now on the run. Terrified that his brother Esau, who's a hard man, his, his brother Esau, he can go out and he's a hunter, and a, he's a hunter and a gatherer where Jacob would, would be like a gardener. <laughs> Not there's anything wrong with gardening, okay. So, in Genesis 28, we read the story where Jacob is out uh, on, his, on his journey and he's out in, in the wilderness and he decided, and it's come to sun, sun, you know, the sun's uh, gone down and it's. Uh, it's like bedtime, so to speak. He takes a rock and he puts it on the ground and he lays on with his head on the rock and he falls asleep and he has this amazing dream where he sees this vision of a stairway leading from the earth up to heaven and angels are ascending and descending on this stairway. When he looks to the top of the stairway, he sees the Lord and, uh, and the Lord speaks to him and said, uh, you know, the promise is still with you, Jacob. Come on, the promise is still with you. You see, Jacob is so troubled by what he's done. He guilt uh, uh, gripped him. And let me tell you something, right? When we do things wrong and guilt grips us, I'm going to tell you there's, there's a force in this world, a negative force that will jump on that and will rub your nose in it. And it'll make you feel even more guilty. And make you feel useless and just crush you. And make you feel like there's no way, but then there's another force. And that force, the negative, comes from the dark side. Uh, it's from Satan. He's a father of lies. And he doesn't want any of God's promises to be fulfilled. But then God, there's a light side. God, the whole Spirit of God comes in. And he speaks to Jacob. And he encourages Jacob. So Jacob gets up and continues. So now Jacob knows that in order for the fulfilment of this promise... He's got to make it right with his brother. It reminds me of when Jesus talks about uh, when we go to the altar to offer our gift to the Lord. He said, if you've got a problem with your brother or your sister or somebody, he said, leave your gift at the altar, go and reconcile your, your problem and then come back. In, in other words, there's something within, you know, there's something like in, in, in a, a conflict, when there's inner conflict with us, whether it's with us or with us and somebody else, when there's that conflict that's going on, God says, you got to reconcile that. As much as it depends on you, you need to go. You need to forgive your brother or forgive your sister, but you need to make things right as much as it depends on you. Now, if you go and you offer, like, say, the olive branch, and you, you know, you say to them, uh, listen, listen, uh, uh, you know, let, let, we need to get on. We need to, we need to do something about this problem. And you, if you've done something wrong, you ask them to forgive you. And you, you're really, you know, repentant. Uh, now, if they don't forgive you, that's not your problem. What your situation, you've done as much as you can do. So don't beat yourself up. Don't beat yourself up at all. All you can do is apologise. Come humble yourself and, uh, and to move on in order to move on. And then you can go and then you'll find a fresh connection with the Lord God. A fresh connection because our relationship with God is built on trust and light and honesty and righteousness. And, and if God sees us wrestling, wrestling to get to that place, then, then there's, a, there's a reward. There's, a, there's an anointing. So we come back to Jacob. The time comes when he has to... Uh, when he's going to think, you know, I, I really need to meet my brother Esau. And he's terrified because Esau's got 400 marching men with him. And, and Jacob, let's be honest, Jacob thinks, you know, 
hey, I've deserved this, I stole his birthright. This is huge. This is like stealing everything that was for him. It's huge. It's like, um, I don't know, a lot of people do lottery in the world, don't they? And they can win 30 or 40 million on the lottery. Well, imagine if, uh, you're, if you've got a brother or a sister and uh, they have the winning ticket and you steal it off them and go and cash it in and then you run. <laughs> They're not going to be very happy. It's like that. It's not great. So Jacob, he's, uh, he's on his way. And what he does, he, he, he sets things up so he, he, get, he comes with gifts for his brother. Uh, don't go away. What I realised this morning is that I, um, I've left my uh, iPad at home, which I usually use for my Bible. So we're just thinking about the gifts that... Um, the gifts that Jacob wants to send to his brother to pacify him. And we find it in Genesis chapter uh, 32. Let me just find that. This is a, a very old Bible. Let's just find me Genesis. <laughs> Hallelujah. 28. We just looked at 28. 30. Let me find it. It's when Jacob uh, is coming back. Here we are. Jacob prepares to meet Esau. In Genesis 32, Jacob went on his way and the angels of God met him. When Jacob saw them, he said to them, this is the camp of God. So the angels of God met Jacob. So the first thing we need to know is that Jacob wrestled with this situation. But who kept coming meeting him? God. He was wrestling. The promise has been spoken to him. God is with him. And Jacob's wrestling him. And you know, when we become born again, when we invite Jesus Christ into our lives, the promise is with us, but now there's a wrestling. We have to wrestle. We have to fight for our faith. We have to fight for, um, for the presence of God, but not just that, we're in a battle. The Apostle Paul says in Ephesians 6, we battle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers of this dark world. So the... He said uh, that uh, Jacob also met the angels and Jacob sent messengers ahead of him to his brother Esau in the land of, say, the country. He sent messengers towards him and said, My master Esau, your servant Jacob says, If I have been staying with Laban, and, and what he said, he said, Now I'm sending this message to my Lord that I may find favour in your eyes. Uh, you see, Jacob is terrified. Interesting, the word Jacob, you could say, means deceiver or uh, you could say corrupt one. Uh, so the, the, the name Jacob goes with his character at this moment. He said, Jacob prayed, O God of my father Abraham, God of my father Isaac, O Lord, O Lord who said to me, go back to your country and your relatives and I will make you prosper. I am unworthy of all the kindness and faithfulness you have shown me, your servant. I, I had only my staff when I, when I crossed the Jordan, but now I have become two groups. In other words, the blessing of God was with Jacob. And Jacob was blessed beyond measure, but he could not shake what had happened with him and Esau. He knew he needed to reconcile it. This was huge. And he wrestled all his life and all those next few years, even though God blessed him and blessed him and blessed him. He still wrestled with that one thing. He needed to put it right. I wonder in your life if there's that one thing that you're wrestling with that needs to be put right, needs to be taken care of. You know, God, you know, the, the Holy Spirit will come and he'll come alongside you and he'll be with you. That's why God kept encouraging Jacob in the dream uh, with the messengers from heaven. God kept encouraging Jacob and the Holy Spirit and Jesus will encourage you and will encourage me. Jesus is with us, he never leaves us. And, and he speaks to us and he communicates to us through the Holy Spirit. This is our God. And so Jacob prayed to God. And he said, save me, I pray, from the hand of my brother Esau, for I am afraid, see, he's terrified. I'm afraid he will come and attack me and also the mothers with their children. See, he's terrified. He thinks his brother Esau is going to annihilate him. He thinks he's going to kill him, wipe him out. Because he thinks if he does that, he'll get the blessing. Doesn't work that way, by the way. When God puts a blessing on you, the blessing's yours. And if you're born again, you know, Revelation 3.20 talks about uh, to the churches where, where it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hear my voice 
and open the door. I will come in and eat with them and them with me. And, and, and being a Christian is, is recognizing that, number one, that Jesus is the Son of God. And, and that Jesus died on a cross and was raised to life three days after the Son of God. You know, he was born of a virgin. And after he'd raised from, uh, from death, he appeared to the disciples for over 40 days, 40 days uh, sometimes to over 500 of them. So there were many, many, many witnesses, not just the disciples that, uh, that met Jesus after he'd risen from the dead. So the promise and the blessing is sure and secure. And when we give our lives to Jesus, first of all, it's like, you know, like Jacob and Esau. And Jacob needed to reconcile himself with Esau. And he was terrified. But uh, you'll see later that Esau... Embrace him. Anyway, I'm jumping ahead of myself. What I want to do is this is a picture of salvation between our Father God and ourselves. When we are in our life, we've done so many things wrong. And our Father in heaven, we've, uh, we've gone against his wishes. We've done so many things wrong. And to reconcile ourselves, there's a wrestling going on. There's a wrestling of the sinfulness within us. A sinful, dark heart against the light. There's a wrestling. But if we would just open our eyes... Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. If we would just surrender, if we would just say, Father God, I, I've, I've sinned against you. I've sinned against man. Would you forgive me? And if we come before like that, humbly, kneeling before our Heavenly Father, kneeling down, humbly before our God to, uh, to, to see him, to, to ask for forgiveness. And so Jacob has got this problem, this issue. So he said, Jacob said, uh, let me go down. He said he, he, he'd been prospered. And then he said, uh, he sent uh, gifts for his brother Esau. He spent the night thinking about it. He said he spent the night there from, from what he had with him. And listen, there's 200 females. This is what we're looking for. It's a huge gift. 200 female goats, 20 male goats, 200 ewes and 20 rams, 30 female camels with the young, 50, 40 cows, 10 bulls. 20 female donkeys and 10 male donkeys. And he put them in the care of all his servants. And, he, and each head he sent one at a time. And he sent them and he instructed the one in the lead. When my brother Esau meets you, he said, and, and he said, who, who do these belong to? And where are you going? And who owns all these animals in front of you? You are to say, they belong to your servant Jacob. And they are a gift sent to my Lord Esau. And he is coming behind us. You see, what uh, Esau thought, he said, he also instructed the second and the third to do the same thing. For he thought, I will pacify him with these gifts. And yet, little did he know, he didn't, he didn't really know the heart of Esau. Esau was a good man. Esau was a good man. And we have a good God. And God's heart is so big and so wide and so mighty, so strong, that no matter what you've done, God will forgive you. He said, perhaps he will receive me. So Jacob's gift went on. And then he said, that night Jacob got up and he took two of his, his wives. He took all his family and he, and, he, and he set them off over the stream. He said, and, and he sent them across the water uh, with all the possessions. And then he said, so Jacob was left alone. And there's a great message here for us. You know, when we're wrestling with things, when we're wrestling with issues, when we're struggling with uh, uh, relationships, uh, circumstances, whatever it might be, uh, things that people, the consequences of, of things that people have done to us when we're struggling with those, to spend time with God. And throughout Jacob's uh, journey of wrestling and fear and all the blessing, he received the blessing, but he only, he, he couldn't take his eyes, he only had eyes on everything that he'd done wrong. He felt bad and that's what guilt does. And that's what guilt shame, and shame does. It takes our eyes, draws our eyes from all that is good. And focus on what's negative. And I wonder if you're like that today. Yeah, the Apostle Paul says in, Ephesians, in uh, Philippians 4, he said, whatever's good, whatever's right, whatever's praiseworthy, think on those things. There's always going to be rubbish around us. There's always going to be negative. There's always, you're always going to upset somebody. Someone's going to, you can't please everybody. I've found that out. Although I keep trying, <laughs> it's impossible to please everyone. But if we have a heart to please God, then everything else will fall into place. So Jacob, he's on his own. That night Jacob got up uh, and he's on his own. Sorry, let me find it. And in verse, uh, it's in, in Genesis 32. 
my eyes hurt what they used to be. I'm guessing it's 23, it looks like 23. We're going for 23. He sent them across and I'm 24, so Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. A man wrestled with him. What I really love about this is that a man wrestled with him, right? So this is God. And this is until daybreak. And, and when it comes to daybreak, it's like the man says, listen, I've got to go. I've got to go, let go. And Jacob won't let go of him. And this is a great picture of what we should be like with God. We should get hold of him and not let go. Not let go, you see. And, and the, the wonderful thing about the man that wrestled Jacob is he could have snubbed him out in a moment. Let, let me just see. If, if, let me just find it. Look, see. He said he wrestled with him in day, daybreak. And uh, he said, when the man saw that he could not overpower him, he took the socket of Jacob's. The man could have overpowered him. Make no mistake. But God has put this in here to show, because look, he said, he saw that he couldn't overpower him, and then he touched the socket of Jacob's head. He overpowered him. This is our God. The suddenness of God. God allowed Jacob to hold on to him all night. And sometimes that's just really what we need to do. We just need to cling on to the promises of God. Cling on to the fact that Jesus Christ, his son, died on the cross and, was, and, 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 and died for our sins, for yours and mine, so that we can have a place in heaven, so that our names are written in the book of life. That if we have the faith to believe and trust and follow, then all things will be added unto that. And Jacob, he said he, said he, over, he couldn't overpower him, but of course he could. Touch his hip and that were it. Put him out. Put him out. But Jacob still hung on to him. He said, Jacob still hung on to him and he still wrestled with him and he wouldn't let go. Then the man said, let me go for his daybreak. I've got to go, Jacob. Listen, I've got to go. And Jacob replied, yeah, no, I'm not going to let you go unless you bless me. So the man said, what is your name? And he said, my name's Jacob, he said. And so the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with men and have overcome. You have struggled with God and you have struggled with men. Isn't that life, isn't that the story of life? We struggle with God. We wrestle with God. We wrestle, how can he be God? I, I can't see him. Where is he? How do I know? We struggle, we wrestle, we struggle, we wrestle. And, and, but, but God, we struggle. But God wants us to know that he's right with us and he comes near us. And we can cling on to the promises of God. And we can cling on. But listen, God said, okay, holding on to God uh, empowers us. And gives us the strength and an ability to, to go walk into the confrontational issue that we think is coming our way. To walk into the broken relationship that we think will never be fixed. To walk into the broken, uh, the sickness or the situation, the poverty, whatever it might be. God gives us the power and the strength and it is us. Holy Spirit, whatever you're wrestling with, whatever you're planning, cling on to God for a night. <laughs> but listen, I love this about God. God said, okay, Jacob, I'll bless you. But then God leaves him. And that's a story of life. You see, some of us, probably me included, we want, we want God to be with us all the time. Everything. Lord, what should I do here? Lord, what should I do? And there's nothing wrong with that. To build that relationship and to recognise that God. But God then says, right, I've empowered you now. Go and do it. Go and do it. Yet you'll go in my strength because I've empowered you. And that's what Jesus said to the disciples in uh, John. In John's Gospel 2022. 20, Jesus breathed on the disciples and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And Jesus breathes on you and breathes on me and says, receive the Holy Spirit. But there's some wrestling has got to take place. And God wants to know, you to know that, and me to know that it's okay to wrestle. Wrestling is, is good. Wrestling is great. And so he blessed him. <laughs> and Jacob said, well, what's your name? He said, well, what are you asking my name, you know? You know, Jacob called the place Paniel, saying it is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. Wow. You know, they used to think that if they saw God, you would just die, and that was it. You couldn't see God. There was no way you could see God, and yet Jacob had this amazing vision, dream and vision and wonderful 
powerful experience and it's right in the first book of the Bible and God's uh, introducing himself to a God that yes he's almighty yes he's all powerful but he's with us and we can wrestle through the things the difficulties of life every situation how am I going to pay this bill the anxieties and the fears the depressions the illnesses we can wrestle through all them <coughs> but ultimately excuse me we need to cling on to God spend some time clinging to God how do you do that you do that in prayer you cling to God in prayer you cling to God by reading his word and you sit you cling to God by meditating you take some time out take time out think, well tomorrow night I'm going to take an hour out. yeah but I was going to watch my favorite program on TV no sacrifice the favorite program in t on TV sacrifice whatever it is you were going to do and cling on to God cling on to God cling on to God let's have a look Jacob da, da, da. okay so I'm just going to see if I can find find where Jacob meets Esau so then we get to chapter 33 so Jacob looked up and saw Esau coming with his 400 men and he was still afraid uh, he divided the children uh, among the among these wives thought you know what I need to just protect all my children he still thought that he was going to be destroyed even though he wrestled with God even though he'd received the blessing, this got in the way. That's why Romans 12 says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This battle in there, that's where the enemy gets us, in there. But God's in the heart of the man. And God's really in Jacob's heart, but he's still afraid. Because he loves his family. He loves everything he has. He doesn't want to lose any of that. And he fears for his life. But look at this, God's gone before him. Because in verse 4, he said, oh, first of all, in verse 3, he said, he himself went on, ahead, went on ahead and he bowed down to the ground seven times as he approached his brother. Seven times. A real sense of humility, a real sense of respect for his old, older brother. His older brother, only by <laughs> seconds. But he bowed down and he humbled himself and he humbled himself because he knew what he'd done was wrong. And when we come before our Heavenly Father and we come in repentance, we should humble ourselves. Father, would you forgive me? 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 Humbling ourselves, coming before God. And look what happened. It said in verse 4 of uh, Genesis 33, But Esau ran to meet Jacob and embraced him. He threw his arms around his neck and he kissed him and they wept. Then Esau looked up and saw the women and the children. Who are these with you? He said. And Jacob said, they are the children God has graciously given your servant. Your servant. You see, Jacob. Jacob, who's now called Israel. A complete change. And there's the thing. When we meet with God, a change takes place. When I met with God, a change in my life, I stopped swearing. I stopped uh, all the things that I that I did, that, that you know, the simple, all the you know, watching pornography, drinking too much, it all went because I met with God and I had a new name. I had a new name, and Jacob met with God, and his new name is now Israel, which means wrestled with God. And maybe our new name would be the same because we wrestle not only with God, wrestling with life, wrestling with difficulties. But look, Esau ran and he threw his arms around Jacob and kissed him. He so longed to be with him. The greatest, greatest, wonderful connection that God uh, can put in a family was there. Was there. I want to encourage you today to take some time out. Find God. Connect with God. Because God loves you and he cares for you. And he only wants the best for you. May God bless you, may God keep you, may his face shine upon you, and may you be blessed. So this video, it, like I said, it's not the Thursday night one, but it's a symbol of message. That message has got lost in the atmosphere now. But um, be encouraged, we have an amazing God. I want to speak God's blessing over you and your family and your children's children. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the one who 
the one who searches the hearts of man, the one who embraces us, and God the Father, the one in heaven who sends the Holy Spirit. Jesus who intercedes for us, God the Father who listens and sends the Holy Spirit. We have an amazing relationship with the Creator God. Don't spoil it, don't waste it, don't lose it. Our God is worth the wrestling. Amen. Be blessed.